Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just want to follow on from that great speech from my colleague from Hamilton West, Mr. Tim McIndoe, who's going to de deliver a stunning electric vi victory in that seat for the National Party at the next election because he has worked hard and he has delivered for the people of Hamilton. He has shown them the vision and the strategy that will deliver a strong future for all New Zealanders, and particularly the people of Hamilton who deserve and have needed that after many years of having to listen to Labour rhetoric. Because today in this debate we see the true colours of the Labour Party. They don't care about New Zealand's growth prospects. They don't care about New Zealanders. They don't care about jobs. They don't care about wages. All the Labour Party cares about is themselves. Being in power is all the Labour Party ever wanted ever will want and ever can hope for, because that's how they argue their case. The Labor Party says that they know best. They know how to do these things. They don't actually need to look at our people for inspiration and give our people the tools to make their own future. And that's the difference between the two political parties. And this budget has shown that. Because in this budget, New Zealanders are given the tools to build their economic future. We are giving them, the New Zealand public, the tools that they would want that many governments around the world can't deliver. A country that has some of the lowest interest rates in the world. That means that hard-working Kiwi families have got low interest rates for their biggest expense, their mortgage. The second thing that low interest rates mean is that people can invest in productive industries knowing that they are paying low interest rates and so they can deliver that productive growth to the economy. Having low interest rates is a key and fundamental result of this budget, something that the Labor Party didn't deliver when they were in Parliament and in, the par in government, and they wouldn't be able to deliver it this time because their economic policy would lead to high interest rates. Their spending budgets would lead to a situation where New Zealand families have to pay more for their mortgage interest rates. It would lead to a situation where New Zealand businesses couldn't invest because they would be paying higher interest rates. That's the difference the Labor Party budget would have given you. It would have stifled the economy. It would have contracted the economy in some of the most difficult times. And they have no plan to pay for Christchurch. They have no way of delivering a plan which will actually help pay for Christchurch and grow this economy. And I actually take offence when I hear them in that side of the House and they go on about Asset, um, the assets of this country and say that, the, that um, all New Zealanders own them and, 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 the, and the like and say that having an investment programme that the National Party through the budget has promoted is a bad idea. And I give them a local example from Hamilton and I want them to think about this example. In Hamilton we have Tainui Group Holdings. Tainui Group Holdings have a policy of investing locally. And they have used that treaty settlement very wisely and are now the biggest commercial player in the Waikato region. And together with other iwi around the country, they will become one of the biggest investment players in this country. Tainui Group Holdings have used local money locally and have invested successfully. Look at what else happens in our region. We have a number of trusts that are community trusts that don't invest locally. Put that money on the US stock exchange. And does that money deliver benefits for the people of Hamilton and the Waikato? Not to the same extent that it would if it was delivered through the Tainui Group Holdings model, where not only the returns go to the Waikato people, but the actual capital investment is used in the best interest of creating a stronger and more vibrant region. And what is the happening with our superannuation funds in New Zealand? Are we investing those locally? No, we're not. Where are we sending that money? It's going offshore. The Labour Party wants to send New Zealand money overseas. That is what they have always set up in the investment programme. And you know why they want to do that? The Labour Party wants to send New Zealand money overseas 
because they're not accountable for it. If it doesn't go well, or they don't make the right decisions, or they don't make any decisions, they are not accountable for it because they can say that somebody overseas is accountable. Some investment advisor that is looking after that money overseas is the one that is accountable. And that is the folly in the Labour Party argument, because they are not backing New Zealanders. That, the, no, I do. You go to Hamilton and Mr Cunliffe says he doesn't believe it. Mr Cunliffe is sitting there realising the folly of his ways, because the Hamilton example where you invest locally pays greater dividends and return of capital and returns. The Labour Party would want to see that money go offshore so that the assets of other countries can be built up and New Zealanders would be confined to a situation where they have to look across the ditch to see benefits and to see what they would actually want rather than actually build those here. And today, around the world, we are living in a situation where this world has not got enough food and there will be not, not enough food for the next 100 years. And what is the Waikato and what does New Zealand have as a strategic advantage? We make food. We make food as competitively and as the best quality of the world. New Zealand has got the chance to be one of the most successful countries in the world. People need what we make for the next generation. The question is, are we going to invest in our country and actually make those profits here? Or are we going to send our money overseas thinking that it's safer to let somebody else have control of them so that we can sit in our pretty little world and say we never had to make any choices. That's what the Labour Party would do. They would sit back, redistribute and say it's not our fault. It's something else's fault. Well, the National Party's not taking that approach. We're going to invest in our country. We know that we've got the people here to deliver the returns. We know that we have the future in the sense that we are a food producing country that has the stars in alignment because the people need our products. And we know that if we invest and we create a stable economic environment where there are low interest rates, there, well are a, there is a well educated and successful workforce, we can take advantage of those opportunities. And that is the plan. And it's such a hard plan that the Labor Party can't work it out. They can't actually see that far into the future because a Labor Party plan is something that is given to them on a platter and they don't have to think about it, they don't have to work for it, that it is a merely a risk redistribution plan. And that is the difference why this budget is so important. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Members, uh, this debate has concluded. <coughs> We have an amendment in the name of the Honourable David Cunliffe. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. The noes have it. No. Party votes called for. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National, 58 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour, 42 votes in favour. Green Party. Votes in favour. H New Zealand. Votes opposed. Māori Party. Three votes opposed. Progressive. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote opposed. Honourable Chris Carter. One vote in favour. Members, the ayes are 53, the noes are 67. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that order. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Party votes called for. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National, 58 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour, 42 votes opposed. Green Party, nine votes opposed. H New Zealand, five votes in favour. Māori Party, three votes in favour. Progressive. One vote opposed. United Future. One vote in favour. Honourable Chris Carter. One vote opposed. Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 67, the noes are 53. The motion is agreed to. And 2010-11 Supplementary Estimates Bill, second reading. 
impress supply, first for 2011-12 bill, second reading. The impress supply, first for 2011-12 bill, is set down for third reading presently, and the appropriation 2010-2011 supplementary estimates bill was set down for committee stage. I declare the House in Committee for consideration of the Appropriation 2010-2011 Supplementary Estimates Bill at 7.30pm.